So you want to know what you should be selling to make a living as a reseller? Let's find out. My name is Margaret. I am a full-time reseller, YouTuber. I do all kinds of different things to bring in income to help support my family, whether it's print on demand, selling locally, selling online, YouTube videos, just all kinds of things. Anything I can do to bring in an income so that I can stay home and be a full-time mom, homeschool mom to my kids and have the freedom and the kind of life that we want to have. So I thought I would come on today and share with you the kinds of things that I sell to make a full-time income. This is going to be a bit of detailed video. I am definitely showing you everything that I sold in September. I thought I'm going to go back a little bit, share all the stuff from September, um, and then a few bits and pieces from October, and then later I'll do another catch up for all October, etc. But I really wanted to dive deep on some of these items just to kind of give you an idea of how you can maximize your profits from different types of, um, say, collections that you find or different freebies you find. And I'll be giving lots of tips along the way about where I find things and where I've been selling them, um, whether online, locally, and etc. So first up, this was a Bradley Mint um, figure, and this was something that I got for maybe a buck or two at a garage sale, and I noticed when I got home that it was broken. See the, the top part of the sword there for him? Um, but I went ahead and listed it anyway because if it was complete, he was worth, I don't even remember, like $50 or something like that. It was So I went ahead and listed it for $20 and it, it ended up selling. You know, I definitely disclosed, you know, that it's missing part of the sword, uh, but still it's sold. So just because something is damaged doesn't mean necessarily that it absolutely will not sell. It depends on scarcity and price of the original item. Somebody may have just been like, you know what? I like this one I can get this one until I can afford to get the one that's complete the next item that I'm sharing is this deck of playing cards this is an, I can't say this in for it's a Napier it's not Napier's anyway in the nude playing cards fine art deck of cards uh, this again I picked up at a garage sale for maybe a buck or something like that and it sold for $25 I have sold a lot of different um, playing cards so if you can get playing cards for cheap then it's definitely worth uh, picking up and flipping them, especially like travel ones, vintage, these that are, are more unique. And um, then they're definitely sometimes the tobacco ones like Marlboro and things like that, just depending on what it is. But I'm going to get into collections here in a little bit because I've um, I have bought a big collection of buttons and also Juan and I got a big collection of comics and magazines um, and that can really maximize profits in a big way. So I was just thinking if you went somewhere and they had like a box full of playing cards um, and, or decks of cards like this and they're like 20 bucks for the box, you know, it might be worth picking it up and parting all of that stuff out. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so this is a Spider-Man comic that sold for $19.99. This one actually happened to come from a friend of mine who gave me nine big long boxes of comic books. Um, she had planned on selling them herself, but she doesn't do a whole lot of selling online. So she offered to let me have them for free. So it really does um, help, you know, if your friends and family know what you do, because then frequently they may just give you inventory that can bring in a lot of money. So definitely a big thank you to my friend Christina for giving me all of those comics because they have brought in so much income for the family. Next, this is another um, example of parting things out. This is a letter H. It's a, it was a, a like a, a flashcard, right? Um, but... It was in a box of alphabet cards and two of the cards were missing. So initially I thought, okay, I'm going to sell this box of cards. You know, they were really cute and they looked all vintage and whatnot. Um, but I looked it up and if the set was complete with all of the cards, it was selling for about $25 as a set. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm not, uh, these are pretty cute. I think I can sell these. So I parted them out and sold them individually as nursery art and they have been selling really steadily at ten dollars a piece so this one I mean I'm making way more money than I would have made at selling them at twenty five dollars I I've probably sold at least half of them already so I've made a good hmm quite a bit already 200 bucks maybe off of those cards that I would have just initially gotten 
25 bucks for if it was complete. So I'm gonna be going through a few of these magazines. So this is a Mad Magazine. This one sold for $20. This was the haul that Juan and I got at that garage sale. It was these dusty, gross boxes, which I am embarrassed at myself for not seeing. I walked by them a couple times and he was like, what's in these boxes? And the lady's like, oh, it's like comic books, like Archie comics. And I'm just thinking, pass. Well, he bust open one of the boxes and they look kind of water damaged. They looked all musty. And it was mad magazines and creepy magazines and eerie magazines, like old horror magazines, national lampoons. Like, so he's just like looking at me and I can't read his mind. He's like giving me these dagger eyes you know we haven't come up with a system yet um and so we ended up getting all of them for 60 dollars um 60 65 boxes and boxes of them and so they again have been selling like hotcakes which you'll see because there's a lot of them that have sold lately um and so this was a mad magazine this one sold for 20 dollars just recently uh, and then this is a pumpkin this one i got from a freebie uh frequently People will just, you know, they're cleaning out their garage and they're getting rid of stuff. So I love Halloween stuff. So this I got from a tub of free Halloween stuff that someone was giving away. And this pumpkin sold for $25. I also sold, oh, there's another one coming up, but it's out of order. Um, but this was a, a pail, like a metal pail. And there were three of them um, that I got at a garage sale for, I don't know, maybe $5.00. And this one sold for 40 Another one sold probably for a right around the same age. And then my sister came and claimed the last one. So she took the last one. But that's fine with me. So this, you know, Halloween stuff. My audio got weird. So hopefully it's fixed now. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, this one sold. Moving on. Uh, so another item, another thing that I like to sell are plush. So this is a Winnie the Pooh. Again, I got this at a garage sale. I generally like to buy clean plush. I don't buy things that are gross or crusty or look like I need to clean it up. I will take, uh, I did buy a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man that needs a little touching up, but it was so big and so cute uh, that I just had to pick it up. So this one sold for $27.99 and I may have gotten it for a couple bucks at a garage sale. This is another thing that I parted out. Now what these are, these are Simpsons posters, but they were from a poster book. And when I bought them at the garage sale, the girl had already pulled all of them out of the book. And so I was like, Ooh, what am I going to do about this? Because I could sell the book. Um, but then I realized, no, these are posters. You can sell these. And she charged me $5 for the stack of the posters. And they've been selling steadily. I have them all listed at $17.99. From time to time, I'll get a best offer and they'll sell for $14, $15. But they've been selling consistently over and over and over again. So even if you see like a poster book, you know, don't be afraid to like part it out, take the posters out, and because you can probably get more money off of it than you would have just by selling the, the book itself. The next type of thing that I like to pick up are snow globes. I don't know how to fix these, so sometimes I come across really cool snow globes, but they are there's not enough liquid in them or the liquid is you know, um, cloudy or something like that. I'm sure there's a way to fix them, but I'm not that person. I believe we got this when we went to New Orleans. I know we got a few in New Orleans. Uh, we were thrifting while we were there. And this is a SpongeBob snow globe that we picked up in New Orleans. So even when you're out uh, vacationing, you can still find things that you can flip when you get home. Another thing I like to sell are holiday items. And this is a double whammy. This is holiday and napkin rings because napkin rings are another item that if you can get them cheap, they can sell for a good profit. Uh, these are little bunny napkin rings that sold for $20. This was a really cool piece. This one I think I got within a freebie box and it's dried flowers. So it's real like dried flowers and leaves and stuff that was made into a little art. And this sold for $32. Weird sales, you guys. Now this is another one of my type of things that I like to sell. It's not necessarily the salt and pepper shaker, but things that are figural. So these are cool. They have the stoneware aspect going for them. They've got salt and pepper shakers. They've got their cute little birds. They are pure one brand. So some people like that. So if you can find an item that ticks a lot of different boxes, then you definitely, you know, it's something definitely to pick up. And I believe I got these at a, uh, a garage sale for a dollar. The lady had a big table full of 
all sorts of different salt and pepper shakers. And so I grabbed a few different ones from the table. This is another one from that big haul that we got that, um, you know, Juan was really good to jump on. And this is a National Lampoon's. This was in the anthology. So there were some books in there as well. As you can see, it is not in fantastic shape. And we only took a few pictures. We didn't go through and go crazy with the pictures and we were just really specific with you know it's an acceptable condition you can see from the cover that it's got some wear and tear and some you know spots and stuff like that but it's still sold for $89 this is another one of my faves I love selling you know again figural items but like dinosaurs and things like that things that you know the parents uh, have got kids that love you know, say dinosaurs. I know when my kids were little, they liked random weird fish like river monsters. If you've ever seen the show with Jeremy Wade, river monsters like arapaima and things like that, sawfish, things that you don't necessarily find a lot of that particular animal. But this was like a big dinosaur and it was plastic, but it was like squishy, like foam on the inside. So it was really cool. So this big old foam rubber dinosaur sold for $30. I got it for maybe a buck. I mean, I, I'm really a big proponent for trying to get your inventory for as cheap as possible, which is why I love getting collections of stuff because you can get the ROI way down there and then you've got way more room. So a lot of the stuff we get, super cheap, you know, free items or collections that are easy to part out. I haven't done a whole lot of thrifting in the last few months because we've just been hitting so many good, as one would say, so many good licks with uh, finding lots of freebies or collections. This is another thing, and this is a little wallet. As you can see, again, it's not in fantastic shape. It's a sack roots, but it was, I mean, it's okay shape, um, but this one sold for $14.99. So wallets and purses, another thing I like to sell. Sometimes people just, they want that design, they want that brand, they want that color, you know, so that's just another area to be looking at as far as things to sell. I mean, it wasn't peeling. I think if it was peeling or gross or something, I probably mm, wouldn't sell it. But you can see there's some wear on the, on the label there. But overall, it was an okay condition. This is another, this is one I spoke about earlier. I got that big, giant tub full of buttons for $25. And I remember when I got it, I was like, did I just waste 25 bucks? Because as I said, I don't like to spend a lot of money up front. Um, and some people were like, yes, you just wasted money, Margaret. Um, but I originally I started keeping a spreadsheet for how much I was making off the buttons. And probably about six months ago, I quit adding to it. But at the six month point, I had already made over $600. So Chances are pretty likely I've probably made a grand off of these buttons already and I spent $25 on them. So yeah, and I know, again, there are some people that are really big proponents for like, oh, you've got to sell something for XYZ amount of profit. You need $25 profit to make it worth your while because you're taking the pictures and blah, 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 right? I mean, they have their whole spiel for why it's a waste of time. But in my point of view, I'm like, this is super easy. Like I can flip, you know, snap, snap, snap. Da, da 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 like super easy to list, super easy to ship, super easy everything. Um, and then they just sell consistent, consistent, consistently. You know, and this is not something that I had to do like a ton of research on or anything like that. So for me, it was totally worth my time because again, just like you guys, it would be great if every item I found sold for $25 or more. Of course, that's all I would ever sell if that's all I ever found. But in reality, you have to kind of go where you can find the money for the profits, where you can get things cheap and sell them to make a lot of money. And that's what I do. Ah, here's another one. This was another one that was in that free tub of Chris, um, holiday stuff that I got. Um, this football one sold for $25. Again, another one of my buttons sold for 10 bucks. I mean, 10 bucks over and over and over. Some of them sold for more, 18, 20, etc. But they all just keep selling, keep selling, keep selling. Easy, easy, easy. This I got, uh, I got two of these at the same time actually, and I got them for 75 cents a piece. And it's again, love the figural items. It's vintage. This one sold for $18. And another item that I like to sell are glass, like paperweights, glass eggs, like this. Some of my paperweights have been a little bit slower to sell lately. But I just can't stay away from them. I love them. They're so pretty. And if I can get them pretty cheap, I don't tend to spend a lot, you know, a few dollars maybe if they're spectacular, you know. This is a Robert Kuo, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, <clears throat> bracelet that's a cloisonné bracelet. Not all cloisonné sells for this amount. So if you're like, whoa, I need to start picking up cloisonné because it's $85 is what this sold for. Um, not all cloisonné 
sells for that price, but because it was that particular designer, that's why it sold for so much. I personally love Cloisonne and I have tons of it and I probably should pare down how much I've got. This is another item, you know, as far as um, getting collections, we went to a garage sale and a guy had a shoebox on the table. And this is when I say like, Sometimes you drive past garage sales and you're like, I'm not stopping. There's only one table there. And it's just like, meh. Well, this was just like in a shoebox on the table. It was like this older man. He maybe had two tables, not a whole lot of stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. Something's saying, get out. So I got out. He had this shoebox and it, and we saw the Harley patches in there. We're like, okay, how much for this? There was other stuff, which I'll say. Um, and the guy sold us the whole box for $5. So it, there were Harley patches. There were keychains. There were buttons. There were, I mean, it was just full of just little things. But for that $5, we made so much money. Actually, some of the keychains ended up selling before some of the Harley patches, which I was like, the Harley patches are the winners. But I know there was a, a like a lottery keychain that we sold for maybe $17 that was in there. This is a Pyrex Town and Country. I know that, that there are some Pyrex patterns that sell for more, um, some for less. I don't know. I mean, some people are on it and they know like exactly what to look for. So if you want to do that kind of research or maybe jot down like the, the types or have a little picture reference some are worth a lot of money and um i just kind of look them up or i go no oh, it's cheap i'll get it you know it's in good shape i'll get it um because i don't know them off the top of my head so this was a good one sold for 22 dollars this is another one this is a nordic light it comes in a little box i don't know if you can see up there um the one when i got it it came in a little box like that um and it sold for 25 dollars i see them from time to time but uh I saw another one at a garage sale and the, the lady wanted $5 for it. And I just like, I can't do it. I can't pay it. Um, because this one also sat for a little while. So I know if I spend the five bucks, it's going to sit for a little bit. It's still a good profit. So you just have to kind of weigh all of those things in your head when you're trying to source inventory. Victor Victoria, where are my mug life people? Mugs are another thing that I really like selling. Um, they're fun to pick up. They are easy to ship, I think. And they can bring a pretty good profit. And a lot of times when you go to garage sales, people are just like, take them. Uh, four for a dollar or whatever. You know, a lot of times you can get them pretty cheap. So I got this one. I can't even remember how much I spent on it. But $15 uh, sold for this Victor Victoria mug. This, there's going to be a blue one coming up in a minute too. If you aren't plugged into your local free um, sites, whether on Facebook or on Craigslist or wherever, we hit, I mean, we got so many scores from this, you know, because this was something somebody was cleaning out somebody's house, maybe their mom's house or something. They didn't want to have a garage sale. So they just said, hey, come over here. We're pulling all this stuff onto the driveway. Come and get whatever you want. And so we hightailed it over there and we did, we just loaded up vacuum cleaners, this, you know, these Jim Beam decanters. We had a car full before we left. Free stuff, right? So this sold for $30, which was fantastic. Um, Tigger is another one, another mug, mug life peeps. So this one sold for $12. And this was a tiny little Thai Beanie Baby. We got a bunch of Beanie Babies at a garage sale, like a whole like grocery bag full for I don't know a couple dollars so I was like yeah because I don't again some mini babies sell for more than others and I don't I don't want to sit and look everyone up at a garage sale but I was like you know what I'll take the chance there's a bag of them a couple bucks let's take them home and see what we got um so $15 on this one and I sold another one recently too uh but oh, that's for another video anyway and then these are little um they're kind of like little Le Creuset. Le Creuset is a brand I love to pick up, but I always end up giving it to my sister because she loves it too. Um, but these are little Staub. They're little ones like so. Um, and this sold for $25. I had a few whites and a few of these blue teal ones, and this one sold for $25 as well. I think I may only have one left, but I think I had five when I originally picked them up. So those are cool. And then this is another one of the buttons that we talked about. This one sold for, and here is the cobalt blue on this one sold for $30. Again, we got this absolutely free. Now I will say, you know, just depending on where you live, we tend to have really good luck with the freebies um, around the end of the month and the beginning of the month when people are moving. Like you'll see something here in a few minutes, but we just this past, um, towards the end of the month, I guess it's been a week or two ago, got uh, a couple, two, lawnmowers, 
weed eaters. I mean, just all kinds of stuff that, that were pretty easy to flip. So uh, again, coming up, I'll share with you some more of the stuff that we picked up at some of our freebies. Freebies. Another button. This one sold for 10 bucks. Um, this is a ceramic Christmas figure. This one I actually got from, gosh, I got a lot of free Christmas stuff too that I think about it. Um, we went to a moving sale. It was a couple they were moving out of their apartment and they, they had a lot of stuff inside that they were selling. But then on the porch, he's like, everything on the porch is free. So I went out there and it was like cleaning supplies and brooms and mops and Swiffers and all their Christmas stuff. So I took all the Christmas stuff, all the cleaning supplies, Swiffers and stuff like that, because the Swiffers, mops, brooms, you know, that kind of stuff you can also sell on Facebook Marketplace locally uh, because those things can be expensive if you go buy them new. And um, cleaning supplies, things like that. We, a lot of that we keep, but the cleaning supplies, but say the Swiffers and things, I mean, you can sell them locally and just make some quick money like that. So this was another one of those items that was in a bunch of free stuff that we got. And this was $25 that I got. This is again from the free, all that Halloween stuff in that tub that I got. And this uh, sold for 18 bucks. I think I, I made a video about that. I think it's something like I went for the baby gate because, you know, those little baby gates, something else that we sell locally. Um, they, they had it on the curb and they had all of these tubs as well. So I got the baby gate, that's which we sold locally. And then one of the tubs had all this Halloween stuff and just making money. Uh, this is a Yeti hat. Actually, Juan got, there was a guy that was selling, he had a bunch of Yeti stuff, t-shirts, hats, and all this, and he was able to get these for $5 a piece, and so we sold this for $70. And then this is a luminary. Another item that I really like selling are luminaries, things kind of like this, figural items. There's going to be a light inside, you know, that displays the light. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, but anyway, yeah, this is really cool. And it's a bird. Cool. Uh, and this one ended up selling for $37. So that's why it's crossed out like that. And then this is another one. Where did I get this one? I paid for this, but it was like a buck or two at a garage. So I just thought it was super cool. Um, it was like a punched Christmas tree. You can put the little candles in it. Uh, and this sold for $38. This is another one of the magazines from that big lot that we got. I think it took an offer of about $34 on this one. Another one, Penthouse, got to be careful because you can't sell it on all different platforms. Um, and this one sold for $17. Another creepy, this one sold for, it was either $21 or $24. Another creepy, this one sold for $34. And once again, you see, I just put that condition as acceptable. So if you're like, I don't know anything about magazines. I don't know anything about comics. Me either. And I am not, I did not, I mean, hundreds of comics. I did not flip through every single comic to decide if it's acceptable, good, because I don't rate comics. But what I can do is say, this is what uh, we've got going on in this comic. You know, this, this, it's old. It could have, I just put like, could have tears, rips, stains, etc. you know. So I put it all in there like, these are the possibilities when you're getting this because it would be so time consuming to go through every single one and like screen, like capture every single flaw, but I would go out of my mind. So I just, even if they're in great shape, you know, and I just put acceptable, I would rather the person get it and be like, wow, this is way better than I thought, or then get it and be like, oh, this is way worse than I thought. So I just put them all as acceptable, put that caveat on there, could have X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and no problem, still been just selling, 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 and getting good reviews on them. Again, this one I put good condition, which is unusual because I put it acceptable, I thought, for all of them. But so this is the Mad Magazine. This one sold for $17. National Lampoons, $10 on this one. And I'm going fast, but you kind of get the idea with the magazine. So this one sold for $30. And again, we got the, all of them for $60, $65. Bucks. This is a belt that we got at a garage sale for a dollar. It's a Playboy belt. And this one sold for $19. And then again, this is a National Lampoon's it's kaleidoscope. The other side had like, I think some cheerleaders on it or something like that. And this one sold for $80. These are nails. <laughs> so this is red Aspen. And for a little while I was using red Aspen nails and you would get points when people ordered and then you could get free product. And so I just started selling off the free product that I got cause I quit using the nails. I mean, they were fine and everything, but I just decided not to wear them anymore. So $16 on these nails. National Lampoons again. This one sold for $17. Creepy. 
So for her, I believe this one was $24. This was a little bell that was in the Harley box with the Harley patches. This little bell keychain sold for $15. And then this is a journal. It kind of got cut off on the bottom and the picture's wrong, but it's like a, a journal that you would write in. And this one sold for $19. And this was, I'm thrifting my collection because I was going through all of my collections of stuff, deciding like, what do I want to keep? What do I, I don't, it's just in a tub in my closet. So time for me to start selling my collection of stuff and making some money off of that. This one, I chopped off my picture too. This is a screen, like one of those room dividers. I usually have one behind me here, but um, this is one that I got again for free and I am selling it for $50. There's a lady picking it up today. So this is a, a screen that I got free. This is one of the um, lawn mowers that we got and we sold one a couple last week. And then actually I just got a message from Juan saying that he sold the other one that we got for free as well uh, today. So 200 bucks, you know, again, it was just a family. They were moving. They were moving to a house that they didn't have a yard or wherever they were moving. They're like, we don't need our yard stuff anymore. Come and get it. So we got lawnmower, weed eater, lots of like lawn care stuff like weed and feed and things like that. Uh, this is the kind of thing, this one hasn't sold yet, but we have sold many, many, many of these. And this is like one of those spreaders. They're so expensive in the store. They're so expensive if you go to Home Depot. So we pick them up. Usually we try to get them for about $5 or less at garage sales. We've gotten some for free. And they this one sold or is up for $25, bucks, but we have sold some for $40 and more, depending on the style, because some of them are more intricate than others. And then this is, let me see if I can, yeah, this is the the Ryobi weed eater that we got for free. Ah, I, can't, I was trying to zoom it in for you, but um, yeah, so this Ryobi one blower weed eater attachment would hook on and it sold for $60. And then this is another item I wanted to talk about, um, Ikea stuff. So if you're thinking of selling locally, we do really well with selling Ikea stuff. And this is like the little Ikea kitchen. I think we got this for $5 and um, this one sold for $65. But if you're interested in selling locally, then looking for Ikea furniture and Ikea accessories, things like that, they can, they sell pretty quick. So I know a lot of times you're like, mm, that's Ikea stuff. I Maybe people are paying because they, they don't want to put it together. I don't know. But um, yeah, we do really well selling Ikea stuff. Go down and leave a comment. Let me know something that you sell that you enjoy selling that brings you a lot of income. And you guys check the comment section because a lot of times there is great advice down there. I know I get lots of great tips from you guys. So definitely leave that comment. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when I put out new videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.